What if the mood swings you battle aren't primarily in your head, but signals from your metabolism telling you insulin isn't getting through? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're exploring whether mood disorders like bipolar disorder and major depression are, at their core, metabolic diseases tied to insulin resistance. I'm Alara Skye. You'll hear how new findings connect pancreatic insulin release with activity in mood-related brain regions, why insulin resistance is so common, and what practical steps help you restore insulin sensitivity in a steady, sustainable way. Let's start with the scale of the problem. Bipolar disorder impacts more than 37 million people, and close to 4% of the global population experiences major depression. These conditions are usually framed as brain-only issues, chemical imbalances, or faulty circuits, yet insulin resistance keeps showing up alongside them. That overlap suggests your mental health and your metabolic health move together more than most models admit. Insulin is not just a blood sugar hormone. It's a master signal. Your pancreas releases it. It binds to receptors on your cells, and that unlocks channels so glucose can enter and power everything from your thoughts to your muscle contractions. After you eat, insulin rises quickly to keep glucose in a safe range and to refill stored energy as glycogen. When that signaling falters, the ripple effects reach your brain, where neurons also rely on insulin to regulate energy use. A 2025 Nature Neuroscience study adds a new layer Researchers found that in people with bipolar disorder, pancreatic islet cells derived from stem cells secreted less insulin, linked to high expression of a gene called ROR-beta. In mice engineered to overexpress ROR-beta in pancreatic beta cells, behavior oscillated with the light-dark cycle, depression-like patterns in the light phase and mania-like patterns in the dark phase. They also observed a synchronized shift in the brain. During the light phase, Suppressed insulin release aligned with hyperactivity in the hippocampus, a region involved in mood, memory, and stress. By the dark phase, insulin release rebounded, hippocampal activity dropped, and mania-like behavior emerged. The data mapped a circadian feedback loop where pancreatic insulin and hippocampal activity influence each other across the day. That loop reframes bipolar disorder as a disruption in an organ-to-brain conversation, not a brain-only defect. It also hints at why strategies that respect daily rhythms, timing of medications, targeted light exposure, or eating windows could matter when you're trying to stabilize mood through metabolism. Earlier lines of evidence point in the same direction. In 2022, a perspective in translational psychiatry argued that lithium's stabilizing power may rely partly on insulin pathways in neurons, the PI3K-AKT cascade and its downstream target, GSK3-improving glucose uptake, so neurons have steady fuel. The same year, a clinical trial in long-suffering, treatment-resistant bipolar depression tested metformin against placebo while usual psychiatric care continued. Those patients had been sick for decades and failed nearly a dozen medications, Within weeks, the metformin group improved metabolically and psychiatrically. By 14 weeks, about half regained insulin sensitivity. And that shift coincided with marked drops in depression and anxiety. Benefits persisted to 26 weeks for people told there were no options left. Restoring insulin signaling made a tangible difference. So why is insulin resistance so widespread? In the U.S., around 40% of people have it. Repeated glucose jolts from refined sugar drive your pancreas to over-release insulin until your cells tune it out. Seed oils such as soybean and corn oil break down into reactive byproducts that damage cell membranes and interfere with insulin receptors, especially when heated. Environmental factors add stress. Endocrine-disrupting chemicals and constant EMF exposure have both been implicated in cellular stress responses. Layer on chronic stress, poor sleep, and low activity, and you create a continuous mismatch between fuel delivery and cellular uptake. 
If you want a clear read on your status, a simple calculation helps. H-O-M-A-I-R. You'll fast overnight and get two labs, fasting glucose and fasting insulin. Then use the formula HOMA IR equals open parenthesis. Fasting glucose milligrams per deciliter times. Fasting insulin micro units per milliliter, close parenthesis divided by 405. Lower is better. Under 1.0 is the goal, and even values around 1.0 deserve attention. It's not as precise as a euglycemic clamp, but it's accessible, inexpensive, and useful for spotting early resistance and tracking progress. Let's translate this into steps you can implement. First, start with carbohydrates that are easy on your gut. Glucose isn't the enemy, it's a primary fuel. If you slash carbs too hard, you'll push cortisol up and degrade muscle to make glucose. Most adults do well with ample healthy carbohydrates, but if you deal with bloating, gas, or constipation, begin with gentle sources like white rice or whole fruit to supply glucose without overwhelming digestion. Once digestion settles, bring in resistant starches and root vegetables in small amounts. Cooked and cooled white potatoes or green bananas are steady starting points. If tolerated, expand to garlic, onions, and leeks. These feed bacteria that produce butyrate, which supports your gut lining and helps regulate blood sugar. Many people notice steadier energy and fewer cravings as this phase takes hold. As resilience builds, slowly rotate in a wider range of plant foods. Start with roots, then add leafy greens, beans, and legumes, and eventually whole grains. Introduce them gradually and avoid eating the same new item every day at first. Your microbiome needs time to adapt to new fiber sources. Over time, that diversity stabilizes metabolism, provided you move at a pace your gut can handle. What you remove matters as much as what you add. Cut vegetable oils high in linoleic acid, ultra-processed foods, and alcohol. These erode the gut barrier and promote bacterial patterns that fuel inflammation and insulin resistance. Swap in fats like grass-fed butter, ghee, or tallow to support intestinal repair and a healthier microbial balance, which in turn improves insulin responsiveness. Lifestyle anchors the plan. Daily movement drives glucose into muscle without demanding as much insulin, Sleep restores hormonal rhythms that curb cravings and stabilize blood sugar, and stress reduction lowers cortisol so insulin can do its job. All three reinforce the metabolic mood connection you're trying to rebuild. A quick FAQ before we close. How does insulin resistance affect your brain? When neurons can't use insulin well, they struggle to take up glucose. That energy shortfall disrupts circuits that govern mood and stress responses. Does having a mood disorder guarantee insulin resistance? No, but the overlap is high, and testing gives you clarity. Can improving insulin resistance change mood symptoms? Clinical trials indicate that restoring sensitivity often delivers substantial relief. Here's your challenge. Within the next week, get your fasting glucose and fasting insulin drawn, calculate your HOMAIR, and choose one concrete step. Remove seed oils from your kitchen, Begin with gentle carbs like white rice and whole fruit, or add a small daily portion of cooked and cooled potatoes or green banana. Track how you feel for two weeks and schedule a retest to confirm progress. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.